Do you find metal science difficult or challenging, or you want to upgrade your metric? Crazy Physics is your answer. The home of quality and inspired teaching of maths and science. We offer the best service in teaching and simplifying concepts with fun and easy to remember dynamics. No one does it better. Many have had their dreams set in motion under our tutelage. We want to be part of your success story. We offer both actual and virtual tuition and homeschooling from grade 10 to 12. Are you working but need to upgrade your metric? Trust me, we got you covered. Holding your hands till you make it for your metric upgrade wherever you are in South Africa. Our cloud and remote resources are adequately prepared to take you through every concept in detail. Simplified explanation simulations to make you enjoy science and have fun with it. Textbook, workbooks, plug and play on the gold class would also assist you as part of our resources. Why don't you just subscribe to our YouTube channel? Don't forget to hit the like button. Crazy Physics or Crazy Editing. Register now for 2021. Send us an email at info at crazyphysics.org.za You'd never go wrong with us. Welcome to our concluding session of the Quick Maths Revision for Grade 11 and 12. This is just looking at algebra and um, Euclidean geometry. Remember, this session is more for the Grade 11s. The Grade 12s are also um, likely welcome to benefit from this class. We've done through a few things. Oh, I put my thank, my thank you here. I'm going to drag that cat down. I'm just going to look at two or three questions here. Very short clip um, on Euclidean. Let's see. Oh, seems I've got like four questions. Okay. It's going to be quite fast. I'll thank you for tuning in and I hope you do enjoy this section. Yes. Um, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle. Red eye OH and OJ are drawn. Okay, so red eye. Um, if you go through my ex doctors in Cape Town, once you see red eye, I'm already thinking about angle at the center is two times angle at the circumference because of the word red eye. Now, a tangent is drawn. Ah, the fact that I'm looking at tangent, the quick thing that comes to my mind, tan chord, tan rad, it says a tangent, so it's one. If there were two tangents, then I'll think about the third one that says that um, two tangents drawn from a common point are equal. That's what's going on in my mind. A tangent is drawn from... which is that point. EJ is drawn such that GH is parallel. I'm already thinking about my fun angles. All right. So before I even look at the question, I'm thinking already. It says O1 is equal to... Name three angles that are equal to X. Lovely. Can I say G is equal to X? You know that already. I told you when they give you radius, radius there. Angle at the center is two times angle at the circumference. 8.1.1. Angle G equals to X. Angle at center is equal to two times angle. I hope you paused the video. Forgot to tell you. Pause the video and answer the rest of the questions. Then you play it back to make sure you are good. We have three more angles. All right, let's try a trace back system. Let us trace our angle X. Angle X, wait. Angle X, oh, angle X is between these two. Check something. I see something important here. Angle X is between this line and that line. And there's something about that line. Oh, parallel. So angle X has got something to do with the parallel line there. Mm, awesome. So, parallel line, parallel line. Ah, got it. Is that fine? That this angle is equal to that angle. Alternate angles. Because of, so you need to just, idea is look at your angle. Angle is between two particular lines. What are the nature of those lines? There's a parallel line there. So I can then, it makes life easy, all right? Angle H1 equals to X. What's your reason? Alternate angles. 
GJ is parallel to KH. So always look at the relationship, okay, of the angles. Uh, let's check here. I, I'm going to write it there. I'm looking for the third one. I'm looking for the third. Oh, check here. Where's my highlighter? This angle here is between this line and this line. And this line is a tangent. That's a chord. Which chord? G and H. Oh, GH. Let me get a highlighter. GH subtends angle J. So angle J, the whole of angle J subtended by chord GH is equal to X. Done. I think we have three angles already. Angle J is equal to X. Ten chord. So don't look for too many things. Walk around the angles that you have. Look at the angle and ask yourself the lines. What are the nature of the lines between them? All right. Prove that H2 is equal to H3. Please pause the video and go through. All right. Prove that H2 is equal to H3. These two tiny angles there. Okay. Let's see something here. I'm just going to make pronounce some lines more. All right. That's a radius. And that's a tangent. Lovely. It means this whole angle is 90 degrees. 10 rad. Oh, it means my H2 will then be 90 minus X. Okay. Let's go see. Uh, if I need to find H3. Oh, I told you when you see red eye, angles opposite equal sides. I I'm done. I don't know if you're done following X doctors in Cape Town. So I'll start by saying angle H1 plus H2 equals to 90 degrees, 10 rad. Or you can label it and say KHO. All right. Same thing here. This two equals to 90. It's the same thing. I'm just using different labels. Which means that my H2 equals to 90 minus X. Done. Now, if I go into triangle OHJ, I know that OH and OJ are equal. Therefore, H3 is equal to H1. Angles opposite equal sides. Okay, what is H3 going to be? Um, if I say 180 minus 2x over 2, and that will be 90 minus x. Let me quickly explain why I'm saying that. So H3 plus J1, oh, I said H1. I'm sure I confused a few people there. My bad. It's J. J1. Let's look at the diagram together. H3 plus J1, all right, plus O1 would be equal to 180. But these two are equal. So I can say H3, 2H3. Makes sense. Plus O1 equals to 180. So 2H3, 180 minus O1. All right, what is H3? 2 is common here. 90 minus X divided by 2 from the H3. All right? 90 minus X. And what will be my reason? Sum of angles in a triangle. So you can see we have our H2 and our H3. H2 is 90 minus X. H3 equals to 90 minus X. Therefore, H2 is equal to H3. 8 marks. Beautiful. The skill is look at the angle and look at the properties of the lines around the angles. Life becomes easy. Let's run through this. Looks nasty. In a diagram, KF quadrilateral. Mm -hmm. Let me quickly KLMN. While I'm drawing, I'm sure you're thinking about the properties of a cyclic chord. All right. Exterior angle of a cyclic chord equals to opposite interior. You know all of that, right? And the segments in the cyclic chord are equal. 
and opposite angles are supplementary. All right. So I've quickly thought about all of those by seeing the word cyclic quadrilateral. That's what goes on in your mind. Don't just read now. Diagonals LN and MK are drawn at P. Okay, continue. Um, by the way, this is not a tangent. Let's put it there. Not a tangent. Why? It cuts through the circle. So don't even think about 10 chord. If everyone's thinking about 10 chord, no. Throw that thought away. Okay. P is a point and MP is produced to T. A point outside the circle. Chord LP is drawn. LMK is Y. Okay, we found LMK Y. And N1 is 2Y. Find 2Y. All right. Give another, give it with reason, another angle equal to Y. Let's trace back again. Where is Y? Y is between these two. Okay, there's nothing between these two lines, but by the way, nothing special. However, Y comes from this chord. LK. That's where Y comes from. See LK. You, remember, you know that theorem now. N2 is equal to K okay, angles in same segment. We're done. How many marks is that? Two marks. Oh, makes sense. 8.2.1. 8.2.2. Calculate given reasons. I told you guys, don't forget this. Any angle you get, just put a Y there. All right. Calculate given reasons the size of angle Y. Ah, there is a cyclic chord. Opposite angles of a cyclic chord are supplementary. That whole angle and this angle. Are oh, we done? We're done. Euclidean can just be this easy. All right. Uh, angle L plus N equals to 180. Opposite angles of what? Cyclic quadrilateral. Great. What is angle L? 87 plus what is angle n 3y oh i think we can get this now 3y is 180 minus 87 uh 3y should be 93 therefore y is 31 degrees beautiful done please pause the video and do the last question in case you didn't pause earlier on what are we looking for tpl interesting Two marks. Mm, there must be something here. TPL. Let's go check. TPL. This angle. Uh, let's use a blue one. Interesting. It's not a 10 chord. So please, throw that thought away. All right. I see something here. There's a straight line. TPL comes from a straight line. Once you see that straight line, start thinking about exterior. Oh. Oh. Boom. Oh, yeah. I see so many cyclic chords here. Ah, done. P there is an extreme angle. Okay, there, there's another cyclic chord which will not help us. Let me show you. There's another cyclic chord here, but that will not help us. Let's see, would it help though? Let's see. Let's see, it probably would help Will it help? Because there, just want to see something here. This, we need to find. Oh, it does help. It does help. Check that. Angles in the same segment. This is 2y. It does work. Depending on what you see first. All right. Because they are both coming from ML. All right. Uh, where's my highlighter? Would it work? Okay, no, no, no. All right. Yeah, it does work. It does work. Check this. In the cyclic, let's use something visible. Too many colors now. In the cyclic quadrilateral. Do you see that cyclic quadrilateral there? Good. This angle is equal to that angle. Angle in the same segment, 2i. Makes sense. And if I then use the green one, This angle is equal to that exterior. Interior, beautiful. Here's the blue one I was using earlier. This angle is equal to that. So it's still fine. Whichever one, 
That's the beauty of maths. That is the beauty of maths. 8.2.2. What is TPL? TPL equals to 2Y. Exterior angle is equal to opposite interior angle. And this is 2 multiplied by 31. And my answer is 62 degrees. Done. Next question. Please pause the video and answer all these questions. Pause and answer. Brr, done. Okay. P-O-N is a diameter. When I see a diameter, I'm quickly thinking, oh, I see. 90 degrees. That's what I'm looking at quickly. Oh, go and write your answer. M2 is 90. Okay. I'm still reading, guys. TM is tangent to this. Oh, tangent. I'm thinking about 10 chord, 10 rod. Ah, wait. If that is a tangent, that is a tangent to that chord there. All right. Which chord? Chord MN. Mm. Chord MN subtends which angle? P. Oh, that would be 66 degrees. <laughs> I'm already answering. We'll see. Okay. Uh, R is a point on the circle such that OR is parallel to PM. Okay, OR. All right, I'm thinking about my fun angle. <laughs> oh my God, just. I don't know if you see this. Fun angles there. Let me use a black one. Just by reading and making signs and just going through those lines. I think I've answered all these questions. Do you see that that angle? Will it be what? That's fun angles. All right. 66. Hmm. Is it 66? Yes. Now, this looks confusing. Somebody's thinking, but angle at the center. I also thought that for a moment, and I looked at it again. It is not angle. Okay, fine. Angle at the center. But this one doesn't come here. I hope you see so it cannot be multiplied by 2 or divided by 2. You've got to look at the angle at the center. But this comes from there, not from here. I hope it makes sense. I hope you got that. If this was this way, then we would say 33 there. Okay. So check. I am only merely reading, but I'm almost done with NR and ML are drawn. M1 is 66. Fine. It says find angle P. We know it's 66. How did we get 66? 10 chord. Okay, I'm just going to answer here. P is equal to 66. Do you see how easy? What's your reason? 10 chord. Two marks. One mark for statement, one mark for reason. What is M2? Go back. M2 is 90 degrees. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Angle in a semicircle. Angle in a semicircle. Or you can write angles in half a circle there n1 oh no we didn't get but n1 is so easy n1 is so so easy check that that is a right angle triangle that's a rat all right right angle triangle oh some of angles in the triangle 90 minus 66 that would be 90 minus 66 would be 30 no 28 28 degrees. Angles in a triangle. Beautiful. What about O2? We got O2, remember? 66. Six. Corresponding angles. Alright? But you must mention the lines that are parallel. PM is parallel to OR. Now we want 2. Okay, this is 3 marks. Might need a bit of calculation. Where is N2? Taking my highlighter. Hmm. N2 is here. Okay. Oh, I don't see it's much of a problem. It's not a problem. We got N1. Let's write N1. Always write it. Makes it life easier for you. 28. Now, if you consider this triangle, I'm just going to draw it out for clarity. Consider that triangle.
this is R, this is N, this is O. Okay, that's a radius, by the way, that's a radius. This angle is 66. It means angle R is equal to the total of angle M, angle in a semicircle. So I'll say angle R is equal to angle N. Why? Ang sorry, angles opposite equal sides. It therefore means angle R is 180 minus 66. We divide that by 2. You know why we're dividing by 2? I know. Okay, because those two angles are equal. So 180 minus 66, sorry, 180 minus 66 will give us that. And we divide that by 2, we get 57. So this angle is 57. But wait, that angle is made up of N1 and N2, 57 degrees, all right? But N equals to N1 plus N2. So 57 equals to N1, which is 28, plus N2. Oh, I'm sure we can get N2 from here, all right? 58 minus 27. Uh, what would that be? Okay, my brain is fried right now. Um, first we said, let me just check, 180 minus 66, if that, we divide by 257. All right, 57 minus 28 will give us, um, minus 28 will give us 29. Thinking of the answer as well, 29 degrees. Beautiful. And with that, easy, 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 easy. Uh, I think we've got the last question. I hope it makes sense. All right, looking at this, I already know it's theorem one looking at this. It, I know already it's theorem 1 here. We're not even a games around it. Alright, in the diagram below, AOCD is a diameter. Ah, this examiner is cruel. You know what they want you to say? They want you to say that B is 90 and that's not true. Why is that not 90? Because it's supposed to come from here. Okay, but that, so be careful. AOD is 90 degrees, so be careful about that. But B all right, lovely. BE is 30. Okay. AOCD is perpendicular. Ah, since they, tell, they are telling me that that is perpendicular, it means this and that are equal. Theorem 1. Converse. OC is equal to 2CD. All right. OC is equal to 2CD. Please pause and answer questions. 8.1. Let's see. Um, what is BC? I think we already answered that 15 units. All right? 15 centimeters. They give us in centimeters, so let's give it back to them. And what will be your reason? Always write the reason. Um, it, they told us that it is perpendicular. So a line drawn from center perpendicular to the chord. Done. If CD equals to A, determine OC in terms of A. Wait, if CD, do you notice that OD is a radius? Okay, OD is a full radius. And my OD is OC plus CD. We are told CD is A, but we are also told that OC is 2CD. OC is 2CD. Or we can actually do this. Let's play this way. OC is 2CD plus CD, which is 3CD. And our CD is A. Answer is 3A. With that, they said in terms of A. Calculate OB. All right. Let me claim this. Calculate OB. OB is the radius. Okay. Since they want the radius, uh, let's see. Are we going to be able to get this? That is my radius on uh, a different color that is my radius lovely we know this bc as 15 is it yeah 15. we don't know the radius calculate um that but do we know what do we know again hold on we know cd as a and we know that as 2a so the whole thing there is 3a Okay, calculate OB. Hmm, interesting. OB is a radius. Remember, we have that as 
90 degrees. So that's my hypotenuse. Interesting. So OB squared will be equal to BC squared plus OC squared. In fact, oh, there's no need. OB is 3A. It's one mark. Okay. Because we don't want the value. OB is equal to OD, which is 3A, red eye. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I, was, I was almost strict there. That is 3A. And OB is the same as OD. Now we need to get AB. Where is AB? We need to get AB. Okay, lovely. We need to get AB. It's set to one decimal place, which means it requires us to get values. Interesting. We need to get that. All right. We need to get that. A, B. Oh, that looks quite this is tr tricky. That is my radius. All right. Um, by the way, O, A is another radius. Oh, I see. This is 3, A. Mm. I'm looking at a right angle triangle. Let me, let me reproduce this page. Lovely. I'm beginning to look at a right angle triangle. A rat. There's a rat somewhere hiding there. Somebody saying, what is a rat? Ooh, a rat is a right angle triangle. We have that. Okay? We have that. And we have that. So what do we have here? We have B, we have A, and we have C. 90 degrees. This is 15. All right. And... Uh, can I call this 5A? Yeah, that is 5A. All right? That is 5A. That is 5A. We need to get um, AB. So AB is my hypotenuse. AB squared equals to BC squared plus AC squared. All right? Now, how do we get that? Because they told us um, to get, uh, to correct one decimal place. Let's, my BC is, the value of A somewhere. Let's go back. This is Pythagoras. Let's go back. This is Pythagoras. Calculate, I think, calculate OB. Where is my OB? Okay, OB is that radius again. It means we should be able to get um, something for OB. We should be able to get a value for OB. Okay, let's think through together. We need to be able to get a value for OB. OB is my radius. That is 15. I hope I'm not missing any information. OC is equal to that. Okay. Let's see. Can we get a value? O A. We should do for A. Oh. Let's go back. O B. 3a so we should be able to get a value for a here that's why the examiner actually says calculate OB. so let me calculate ob first for us i'm just going to do this interested i love this question all right so we have a triangle that looks like this already um a right angle triangle remember a small triangle this time around. Calculate. You should get a value. B, C, no, I need a. All right. B, C, and O. This is 15, and that is 2A. This is 3A. Why 3A? It is a radius. Remember, OB is equal to OD. Okay, and our OD is 3A. Theorem of Pythagoras. OB squared equals to OC squared plus BC squared. Let's see. What is my OB? 
3a all squared. What is my OC? 2a squared plus 15 squared. This would give me 9a squared equals to 4a squared plus 225. We bring that there, 9 minus 4. 5a squared equals to 225. What is a squared? Uh, 225 divided by 2. And that would give us 45, I think. Yeah, 45. So what is a? My a is the square root of 14. Uh, will it give us 45? Yeah. 225. Let's just quickly check. 225 divided by 5. 225 divided by 5, 45. And we look for the square root of 45. All right, there's no need to, it's 3 root 5. So, A is 3 root 5. Okay, which gives us a chance to get our OB. What is our OB? Our OB is 3A. 3 multiplied by 3 root 5. And that is 9 root 5. Lovely. 9 root 5. Okay. Uh, on to the last section here. What were we looking for here? Oh, we're looking for AB. And we know our A already as, uh, what's our A again? Our A is 3 root 5. All right, we can just substitute that in. 5 multiplied by 3 root 5, all squared. I think we can just use the calculator here straight to save time. Um, it's going to be 15, 15 squared plus... 5 times 3 would be 15. 15 root 5. And then we close the bracket. Squared. We get that. So we're looking for AB. So square root of my answer. 36,74. How many decimal? 36,74. One decimal place. So we have 36,7 centimeters. Good. 36,7 centimeters. Very interesting piece of question. The last one for this session, the radius of the circle CAB. Let me just do this. Radius of the circle CAB. Somebody saying, but there's no circle. I agree with you. But the examiner says there's a circle. What do we do? We obey the examiner. They are the bosses. All right. Circle. Let's check quickly. C A B. It means there is a circle somewhere there. C A B. So let's construct that circle. C A B. This is what we're talking about. All right. So it, it's going to look something like that. Oh, I think I see where this examiner is going to. So sometimes you would need to just use your pencil may not be a perfect circle like mine, but use um, a circle to construct. Angle C is 90. Ah, if angle C is 90, what does that mean? Check this. 90 degrees comes from there. Ah, I see. It means that AB is a diameter. I am given an angle and I have to find a line, which means it's a converse. Okay. Huh, this examiner is clever. Alright, since angle C equals to 90 degrees, it means that AB is a diameter. What would that be? That would be converse of angle at um, no, angle in a semicircle angle in a semicircle we can do that angle in a semicircle angle in a semicircle oh ab is a diameter it means we can find the radius radius is going to be ab divided by 2 i think we have ab earlier we got ab earlier on 36,7. All right, 
quite interesting. Please learn the principles, learn the tricks. That's what matters. Questions will always change one to another. All right. Uh, all you need to do is to learn the principles. Find the angle, find the nature of the lines that surround the angle. Okay. And whatever angle you get, write it in the question. It helps. If you need to reconstruct, make sure you do. And um, I think this would be all. Ah, oh, thank you. It's been p good four sessions. Make sure you lay your hands on the four videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button below. All right, so you can get notifications of the next set of videos. In case you are not on YouTube, you got this via a different means. Run now to YouTube and make sure you subscribe. Subscribe, share, hit the like button, and you'll be able to get all notifications of the different lessons that will be posted. This is Crazy Physics signing out. Catch you later. And you can reach us. Check our website for more information. Goodbye.